there's a storm out on the ocean. This old way, there's a storm out on Jesus. Drift a storm out on the ocean, and it's moving this old way. There is a storm out on the ocean. And if you are not in Christ Jesus, you will surely drift away. Thank you, choir, for helping a brother out. I give all honor and f to my Father God who lives in heaven. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I acknowledge the Holy Spirit who strengthens, guides, and protects me each and every day. To all who are assembled here and can hear my voice, I greet you in peace. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. There is a word from the Lord this morning. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. They are the first five books of the Bible. The first five books cover many events many subjects, and in them we learn about a man named Moses. Amen. Moses was created by God to deliver the Israelites from Egypt, mm -hmm. to deliver them from bondage, yes. to deliver them from slavery. But Moses didn't know God. He was created by God, but there was a time where Moses did not know God. But one day, Moses found himself in a certain place. And he saw a bush that was burning, but wasn't burnt. And so he began 
to walk up to this bush. And he heard a voice. The verse said, take off your shoes. For the place upon which you stand is holy. I want you to realize that in your life, you will see amazing things. You will experience amazing things. And you are an amazing thing. What some of us fail to realize is that we are like the burning bush. We have the appearance of burning. We have the appearance of failing. We have the appearance of declining. But don't you know things are not always as they seem? Just like the bush appeared to be burning, it was not burnt. And I want you to know that Christians, you are like the burning bush. You have an appearance of burning. You have an appearance of losing strength. You have an appearance of aging. But that does not mean that you are not holy. Because there is a thing in you called the spirit. And it is not going through all of the trials and the tribulations that your physical body is going through. So, yes, your physical body is burning. It is aging. It is going through some things. But how many of you know that God is spirit and we must worship him in spirit and in truth? In that bush, although Moses was looking at it physically, it was really a spiritual thing. And the spiritual thing was what made the ground holy, not the bush. Don't you know that you who have the spirit of the most high God in you, do you not know that you are holy? You might think that you are not perfect. You might think you're not righteous. You might think you're not justified. But what you think never counts. What only counts is what God thinks and what God says about you. So your spirit, nonetheless, which came from God, is holy. And the, certainly the most high God that lives in you in the form of the Holy Spirit, which seals you to the day of redemption, he himself is holy. So can you tell me how you can have a Holy Spirit and the Holy, Holy Spirit inside of you and still not think of yourself as holy? My children, who has deceived you? Who has misled you into thinking that you are something that you are not and that which you are, you are not? Who has deceived you? When Moses became aware of the presence of God, because he would have never known God unless God revealed himself to Moses. And when Moses accepted God as God accepted God's report, God began to have a conversation with Moses. And God made Moses his prophet. And the definition of a prophet is God's representative to man. Amen. I don't know about all those people who call themselves prophets. Because unless God has talked to you and said, you are my representative to the people, you have taken on a title which you cannot... Mm. Do you not know that some titles cannot be taken upon? Yeah. Titles, some titles have to be given. And God gave Moses the title of prophet. God gave Isaiah the title of prophet. 
be careful that you take unto yourself that which is not meant for you. So when God took Moses to himself as a prophet, God had some expectations of Moses. Just like he allowed Moses to tread on holy ground, God would not let an unholy being in his presence. People missed that he was permitted. God just said, take off your shoes, but you could come because Moses was holy. But he had something that kept him from being holy that God said, you have to shed that thing of the world because it's hindering you from having a relationship with me. I want you to know, Christians, that you have sandals on your feet, some of you, and they are hindering you from walking and talking with God. And you are not hearing the simple message that God is sending you. Take off your shoes, the place where you stand, the place where I am, the place that I have decided to meet you at is holy. And you're praying to God and you're asking God for all of these things and you're trying to work for God, but you don't have the message straight because you never shed that thing that was necessary to get close to God so God could tell you exactly what he wanted you to do. And you're making it up as you go, thinking that you are right with God, thinking that you are hearing from God, but you never shed those shoes. You never shed that thing so that you could get close to God and hear his whisper that he doesn't want anyone else to hear because they will try to they will try to sabotage you or they may bring you harm just like Joseph's brothers threw him in a ditch not everybody who you think is for you is for you and so God is whispering to you what he wants you to do, but you cannot hear the whisper because you have not shed that thing of the world, which is not pleasing to God. So when God called Moses, he had an expectation that Moses would walk a holy walk. He had an expectation that Moses would talk a holy talk. Hello, somebody. There's some people who say they are walking with God in holiness, but their talk is not holy. If I was to listen in on some of the conversations that they are having, those conversations are nowhere near holy. And you must understand God wants holiness in all of your entire being, just not in your arm, just not in your hands, just not in your feet. He wants holiness in all of you. So you need to take off those things that you are wearing that is preventing you from satisfying the will of God. Some people think that satisfying the will of God is something that you only have to do sometimes. That if you get it done 90% right, it will be acceptable to God. I want you to know in this lesson today, you will find out that 99% is not acceptable to God. If it's not 100, you will have an issue with God. Moses, he led the people out of Egypt. He read, led them through a sea. God was with them in the front and he was with them in the back. He was protecting them. And then God told Moses, take them into the wilderness. Because God knew that there was something about the people that he had to check. There was people among the people who didn't belong with the people. God wants you to know there are people in God's church with the people, walking and talking with the people, but they don't belong. 
and you want to fellowship with them. You want to just sashay up to people and have conversations and spill your business out to them. You never bother to test the spirit by the spirit. And then you wind up harmed and you think a Christian harms you when the person was never of you in the first place. So Moses took them into the wilderness and they began to show their true colors. Let me tell you in the church, there's people who will, if you give them time, they will show you their true colors. A lot of people are wearing shades and you are not seeing who people really are. Some Christians see it as plain as day and they be staring clear of them. But you are like, oh, yeah. You run right into the person. And then you want to talk about church hurt. Church hurt is not church hurt at all. Because there is no hurt in God's church. Because the people of God in God's church are filled with love, kindness, and humility all the time. So that thing that people want to talk about, church hurt, is not church hurt at all. It's people who are with the people who don't belong. Mm. So the people began to show their true colors. God had delivered them out of slavery, out of bondage. Moses is leading them with his brother Aaron. And what happens? Tough times come. They don't have no food. They don't have no water. There's a lot of Christians, they'll bless and praise God as long as God has given them what they ask for. But the moment that God withholds because he wants to check you, you do what the mm, you do what the Israelites do. They said, why did you lead us out of Egypt where there was pomegranates and fruits and water? They forgot they could never have that stuff, but they talking about like they're talking about it as if it was great. They began to vent and question Moses and say, you did this to us. So Moses, who is walking and talking with God, he's going frustrated with the people. He's like, look at what God has done for you. And you encounter a little bit of tough time and you ready to abandon God. You ready to stone God's prophet. You are ready to talk about me and to me as if I'm just the average Joe. Don't you remember that the Bible says, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. There's people in the church. They know that the pastor is true and preaching sound doctrine and has a love and compassion for them. And just because the pastor doesn't war against them the way other pastors war against them, they want to take advantage of the opportunity of a man who's silent and humble and just act any kind of way and say any kind of things like the people of Israel did. So they began to war against Moses. And Moses said, you know what, I, I just can't take you guys. I'm going to my father. And he departed from them and took Aaron. And he said, God, don't you see what's going on here? You ought to be careful. Lord, have mercy. You ought to be careful when you send your brother or sister or your pastor running to God. When you send them running to God, you've got a problem. You just don't know you have a problem but you are about to find out that you have a problem. So he went to his father and he said, God, you see what these people are doing? They're ungrateful. You've done wonderful works and they are ungrateful. What do you want me to do? Let's go find out what God told them. In Numbers chapter 20, 
verse 2. It says, now there was no water for the congregation. That's Numbers chapter 20, verse 2. Now there was no water for the congregation. So they gathered together against Moses and Aaron. And the people contended with Moses and spoke, saying, if only we had died when our brethren died before the Lord. Why have you brought up the assembly of the Lord into this wilderness that we and our animals should die here? And why have you made us come up out of Egypt to bring us to this evil place? It is not a place of grain or figs or vines or pomegranates, nor is there any water to drink. So Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly to the door of the tabernacle of the meeting. And they fell on their faces and the glory of the Lord appeared. Don't you know when the righteous call upon God? Don't you know that the Lord surely will show up? Verse seven, then Moses said to then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, take the rod and your brother Aaron, gather the congregation together. Speak to the rock before their eyes. He said, speak to the rock before their eyes and it will yield its water. Thus, you shall bring water for them out of the rock and give drink to the congregation and their animals. So Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. See, Moses is God's prophet. And Moses has a habit of doing what God tells him to do. Christians, God has brought you out of darkness into his wonderful light. When are you going to get into the habit of doing what God tells you to do, whether you like it or not. And Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together in verse 10 before the rock, and he said to them, Hear now, you rebels. Must we bring water for you out of this rock? Then Moses lifted his hand and struck the rock twice, with his rod and water came out abundantly and the congregation and their animals drank. Moses was God's prophet. He was doing everything that God told him to do. But one day, Moses decided not to follow God. He followed him partially but he didn't follow him all the way. There are people who are following God partially, but they are not following him all the way. Let's find out what happens when you don't follow God all the way. Moses followed on this day. I don't know if he got all out of the bed on the wrong side. I don't know if not having any water got to his brain. I don't know if the frustration of leading the people got to him. But he forgot part of what God told him. And let me tell you. Here is what God did to Moses. He made a promise to Moses. In verse 12, it says, then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron. See, God is going to always have a witness to his. To how just he is. Because you did not believe me. To hollow me, which is to follow me in the eyes of the children of Israel, meaning to glorify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. After that, many things happened. 
This happened in the book of Deuteronomy. Numbers. And it wasn't until you get all the way to Deuteronomy does God fulfill his promise. There was a whole lot of living that Moses did after God promised him what he was going to do. He said, you're not going over. And Moses, the Bible doesn't say he did anything after that. He just continued to serve God. He probably thought that his service was going to make God forget his promise. He probably thought with time that God would forget what God said. But let me tell you, all of the good works that Moses did from the time that he struck the rock to the time that you get to Deuteronomy, chapter 32. In that chapter, in the 48th verse, you find out, no matter how good you are, if you offend or go against God, if you don't follow his word all the way, God remembers and he surely will pour down on what he promised. Some of you are out there saying, well, wait a minute, I serve a merciful God. God is merciful. He's merciful on what you do today. He's merciful on what you do tomorrow. And he was merciful on Moses because he didn't kill Moses right then and there. He let Moses have more time. In Deuteronomy verse 32, chapter 32, verse 48, it says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses that very same day, saying in verse 49, Go up this mountain of the Abarim, Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, across from Jericho and view the land of Canaan, which I give to the children of Israel as a possession. Verse 50. And die on the mountain which you ascend. Some Christians are ascending a mountain. To see beautiful things of God, some incredible views, some incredible manifestation of the promise that God has for your children. But you will not cross over. You will not cross over because you have not taken off that unholy slippers that God told you to take off in the first place. Do you think the account of Moses is just so that you could learn about a man who stood up to Pharaoh? Do you think the account of Moses is there so you could see God's power to part a sea that he created in the first place? Do you think the account of Moses is there to show you the, that he who God sets free is free indeed. It is all of those things, but it is there to show you if you approach and continue to approach a holy God and forget that he told you that he is holy and for you to be holy and there is nothing in your physical being that is desirable to him because all flesh contains sin and wants to follow the way of the world. If you continue playing with God like he will not do what he said he will do, you will find yourself in a position that Moses found himself 
in Deuteronomy chapter 32. And die on the mountain which you ascend, and be gathered up to your people, just as Aaron your brother died on Mount Hor, and was gathered to his people, because you trespassed against me among the children of Israel at the waters of Merabah Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin, because you did not hollow me in the midst of the children of Israel. Yet you shall see the land before you, though you shall not go there into the land which I am given to the children of Israel. That he and she who has heirs hear what happened to Moses who was a prophet of the Most High God. And if God will do it to his prophet, he will most certainly do it to you. Moses died. He died because of his sin. And there's some Christians that are saying, well, I can't die in the manner in which Moses died because I have the blood of Jesus covering me. Well, I call to your attention <laughs> that there was a group of people who thought that they were covered in the blood of Jesus. And Jesus was standing there and they said, Lord, Lord, didn't I heal people in your name? Didn't I cast out demons in your name? Didn't I feed the poor in your name? Didn't I defend in your name? And when the Lord said, get away from me, you workers of iniquity. Because he didn't kill you right then and there. He told you, go up the mountain and see what everybody else is going to inherit. And you will not because you will die right there. So Moses died. And the Bible tells us that somebody took over from Moses, a gentleman by the name of Joshua, and God told him, just like I was with Moses, I'll be like with you. Just the same way I judged Moses and held him accountable, I will do the same for you. And God is saying, Christians, my son died for you, and he left. I will hold you accountable just like I held Moses accountable. And you will not be allowed to use the blood of Jesus as a covering to continue to be unholy. What happened to the body of Moses? Jude chapter 1 verse 9 tells us, Yet Michael the archangel in contending with the devil when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Michael was an angel, a powerful angel. And even he did not judge Satan. Even he did not accuse Satan. He left that to God about Moses' body. He said, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. God wants you to know, besides that you must be holy, you must walk and talk peaceably with all men and women. Amen. Period. God, Michael did not make an enemy of Satan by coming against him. By accusing him, he left that to God. Amen. Christians, mm -hmm. All right. it is not your responsibility to lob accusations against your brothers, your sisters, or people in the world. Amen. Yes. Amen. You are to give them over to God and you are to handle your business and you are to pray for them who need prayer. Amen. 
When you see someone who is in error, it is not your job to accuse or judge them. People are okay with not judging. They say, I don't judge. But if you accuse, you are judging. If you bring someone before God, when you bring someone before God by your accusation, and if you don't know it, the moment that you accuse someone in the spirit, you have brought them before God. And if you bring someone before God, God is going to say, what in the world are you thinking? That you have the right to bring somebody before me for me to judge. Don't you know that I judge when I want to judge and I forgive who I want to forgive and I mm, I pour out my wrath on he and she who I want to pour out my wrath? What do you think and who do you think you are to bring someone in my court? And there's too many people who think they have the right to bring somebody before God's court by accusing them, by saying you're not qualified to do this or "Mm." like the Pharisees said, what good thing comes from Nazareth? There's too many Christians saying what good thing comes from where Christians come from? You want to remember somebody else's sin that somebody else has told you about when God has forgiven them. But you want to walk in a manner that you can't forgive them. That means you are accusing them and bringing them back to be tried by God again when God has already dismissed the case. For every one of you, God has already dismissed your case. You being here right now is because God has already dismissed your case. Because if God didn't dismiss your case, he would have killed you for your unrighteousness. So none of us have a responsibility or should dare to bring before God someone who God has already dismissed their case. Let he and she who has ears hear what thus saith the Lord. Take heed to God's word. Remove your sandals. They are not acceptable to God. They will not be tolerated. Your partial service to God will not be found well. We serve an all or nothing God. Make up in your mind to be the all or you will be nothing. Thus ends the lesson for today.